Today is a somber day here in the Apple community. Today, May 10th, 2022, Apple officially pulled the plug on the iPod Touch, the sole remaining iPod in the lineup. This comes five years, almost five years, after canning the rest of the lineup, being the Nano and the Shuffle. And this is a day that we all knew was coming, but we didn't know when. And I think it's time. I, I think it's time we say goodbye to our friend, the iPod Touch 7th Gen. So today we're gonna be reviewing the last iPod ever. Let's begin. So, long last, death has finally come for you, my friend. Well, I guess technically not. It's still technically alive because it's still getting iOS support but like, you don't know how long that's gonna continue, but it's it's official, Apple's no longer making these. Um, Apple never actually made this one. I made this one, the, uh, the Tide Pod. I spent $30 on this joke, please laugh. But let's go down the list and see how this has held up for the past couple of years, and if it's a solid note for the iPod to go out on. So up front, we get our four inch Retina display, the last of its kind. This shares the same display as the iPhone 5, which the iPod Touch 5 came out alongside and the 6 and 7 haven't really changed much since then. 1136 by 640p, so not even HD. It does still meet retina requirements at 326 ppi, but it's it's not the greatest display on the planet. It's still okay, like it's not bad, it's just not good, especially in 2022. You got a physically moving, physically clicking, non-biometric home button. This is the last, the last of its breed. So now the entire lineup features Face ID or Touch ID in some manner. And on top of that display, we have a 1.2 megapixel FaceTime front-facing camera. It's not great. I mean, everything about this is kind of subpar. For a music, centric device a camera being sucky is kind of excusable around the sides the very very thin sides with the uh, the chamfered edges jonathan i've always loved it's a uh, kind of run of the mill you know you got your power button on top you got volume up and down and on the bottom you have a single speaker so there was no no stereo pairing for this your lightning port and uh this lovely little hole um i forget what it's used for but i think it was called a headphone jack? People used to use it all the time to like listen to music and stuff. Um, they like plugged in headphones and used to plug it like right into the thing and, and listen to music like that. I, th I think that's what that is. I could be wrong, but I haven't, I haven't seen one in a while and I definitely haven't used one in a while. But yeah, this was one of the last two iOS devices that actually still has a headphone jack. It was this and the the budget vanilla iPad, that was it. Now uh, the iPad is the only iOS device you can get a headphone jack on, so there you go. The price of the headphone jack just increased by $130. And on the back, you get a flash, a microphone, and an eight megapixel camera. Again, it's not the greatest. It's about, it's about the same quality hardware as, again, the iPhone 5 that this form factor, the iPod launched with, um, so it's, it's not great, especially when we have cameras with a hundred megapixels more than this nowadays, but it, it's serviceable, it's passable for a quick FaceTime call. And then inside, we have an Apple A10 Fusion chip that has been uh, downclocked. It's supposed to run at 2.34 gigahertz, and it actually runs at 1.64, so that's kind of, kind of a big hit. But then again, you are working with a very very thin, very small device with a very small battery at 1,043 milliamp hours. Yeah, um, that's kind of that's, that's kind of small. And you got a whole two gigabytes of RAM, so uh, very limited in the power department. But even when this one was released, this was actually it was like May 2019. Right before I graduated high school, this can, this thing came out. Even then, its specs weren't the best. But you know, it, it's again, it's an MP3 player. Uh, it's two hundred dollars, and uh, what else do you want? So the experience using this thing, and I've I really have been meaning to make a video on this for for a year now, honestly. Since since I came back, this was like the third or fourth video I had in the pipe to like kind of push out, and uh, I never never actually got around to doing it. Um, I blame the iMac for throwing everything off. It is an interesting experience. iOS on a small screen is nice, honestly. It's it's really nice. I can I can touch every corner of the display, no problem. I can do whatever I need to do without that stupid little 
stupid little hand jimmy that you gotta do with big phones now. Don't gotta do that with this. The screen, as I mentioned before, is not great, but it's, it's, it's definitely serviceable. Like, I'm sure if I pull it up to my face and start, yeah, I can, I can see pixels. But again, it's $200 and it's not meant to be the best, or it wasn't meant to be the best. So just using iOS is pretty good. Gaming is all right in moderation. Don't expect, like, PUBG or COD Mobile or what else are the kids playing nowadays? Do they still play Asphalt? Is that still something y'all do? But Minecraft, I can tell you Minecraft runs pretty well on this for the hour of battery life that you actually get out of this thing. It's it's all right. It's ju it just gets really hot. It gets it really hot. Um, I don't have like a thermal camera or anything, but it's it gets uncomfortable to hold after a while. But for who it was intended for and what it was intended for, it's not terrible. You know, listening to music, plugging in your headphones, Actually, fun fact, if you do, for whatever reason, pick one of these up new, you get a pair of ear pods, so like the AirPods with wires, you get those with an audio jack connector, but no, no inline controls. It's just two straight wires down to the connector and then into the headphone jack. I don't think any other device ever shipped with those. The more you know. And also another fun fact, this never shipped with a power brick. It, it doesn't. It comes with a lightning USB-A cable and then the headphones we just talked about and like a single Apple sticker and documentation, whatever. No power brick with this. Why are we not complaining about that? Why are we upset that the iPhone took it out and every other phone took it out? Why, why are we upset at that but not this when this hasn't had a power brick since 2012? Hmm. Hmm. But overall, this I keep, I, I almost say phone every time. This MP3 player, this device is very niche. Um, I don't think you should buy one now, new, absolutely not. Don't buy one new. It's $200 for 32 gigs of storage. Don't do that unless you're gonna like keep one sealed and like sell it for 6,000. You know what, shit, I should probably go do that. I don't think you should buy this even third party like secondhand, probably don't get this. Like get get an iPhone 7, same processor, but not neutered, better camera, better screen, better battery, extra gig of RAM. So like there are better options out there. And like iPhone 7s, I see around like 100, 120, $125 very frequently. So to the original working title of this video, should the iPod touch exist in 2022? No, and Apple believes the same, no. But to the new video, to the current video that we're working on now, the end of an era has come. The iPod is dead. And I think we should throw it in the back of the hearse and drive it out the studio. What do you say? I miss you, little buddy. You had a good run. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to leave a like, subscribe. Let me know if you've had an iPod Touch in the past, any generation, and uh, give me one fond memory you've had with it. I wanna, I wanna see how many of us are out there that grew up on this thing. Let me know, and I'll see you guys in the next video.